Okay, everybody, welcome back to another Rob Reacts video. And this young man I have been watching for about a year. Uh, love watching him because he's all about catching blue crabs. And you know me, I got into the blue crab stuff last year and I ain't let go of it, you know, because I can run down there and catch them on the coast within about an hour of me. But this guy is in Baltimore, and he is making his bread and butter living out of catching these blue crabs. He is a true crab fisherman, but sometimes he goes and plays. In the last video that y'all saw that I made, you heard Ian saying, can it catch? That is this young man's catchphrase. Now, anybody that knows Luke McFadden has probably already subscribed to him, but if you have not, on the off chance, Ryan is going to put the link to uh, Luke McFadden's channel in the description. Please go to the original content creator's uh, video to check this out. One of the things that I love about Luke is his work ethic and his play ethic. He comes up with some off-the-wall ideas. And looking at this picture... Uh, this is kind of telling me this is going to be one of his play videos where it's off the wall, but I'm interested in seeing what it is. Y'all join us. Please. Let's watch this. Hey, look, if you haven't yet, anytime into the video, if, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. That helps my channel, helps me get the algorithm going. That helps people look at it. If you like it, really like it, and you aren't subscribed, please consider doing so. Here we go. Without further ado, let's see what the heck Luke McFadden's getting up to in the Chesapeake Bay. Update on the leak. It's not getting any better. <laughs> oh, man. The pinnacle of modern engineering, the Yamaha 25 Enduro, a motor that has carried Central and South America for most of time. I have a really good idea. Well, actually, that's that means it's a bad idea. But the weather here lately is giving us the opportunity. Uh, it is the time of year where the winds start to change. It makes it really hard to go crabbing because it's blowing like northeast or nor'easters all the time, it seems like. It's always way too rough for us to it go. Right. We go crabbing like a couple times a week. You're also working on the Desperado. We have a bunch of these other like grind hard projects going on right now. And every once in a while, I just want to go and do something I want to do. That involves this motor. Uh, heavier than I remember. It's the moment of truth. Oh no. It's got compression and all, dude. She's mint. They're illegal now in the US because of emissions, but this one is pre-emissions. Oh, this one's skated under the radar. These motors are actually notoriously reliable and hold their value sort of but they're supposed to be like pretty indestructible and I can confirm that you can beat on these motors and they are pretty much fine. I'm excited to have one. Here's where it gets a little more exciting. I know you guys are like, oh yeah, I've seen 25 horsepower. Have you seen two 25 horsepowers? We have here matching motor. This is Riley's engine. Same thing, but not quite as nice. Just as heavy, just as heavy. Just kidding, this one's actually way nicer than mine. He's gonna be pissed off if I drag it across the ground here, so. Looks like a bad idea that's starting to get good. You know what I'm saying? A lot of you probably know where this is going. The sponsor of today's video is Factor. Factor not only has the awesome meals that you guys see me eat all the time, where you just pop a couple holes in the top, throw it in the microwave, or put it on the dashboard of your truck, or on the engine of your crab boat, and heat up for two minutes. They also have all kinds of stuff like these shakes. I've been using these a lot lately. They're actually pretty good. I like them because I can grab them in the morning and take them with me. It's like a protein shake, so it's also coffee, so it saves me time not having to make a cup of coffee, but it also saves me time not having Look to make breakfast. Look at all the toys. It's sort of like a light breakfast if you want to just drink one of these. My wife and I love factor meals because it's one of those things where it's saving Jet you ski, a lot of time and boat. money. You do not have to go to the grocery store after working and go buy a bunch of stuff and then go home and take an hour or two to cook the whole thing and then make a whole bunch of something that you can only eat so much of that you don't want to eat every freaking night for the rest of the week. You can have different meals already prepped, sent right to the house every single day, 
for breakfast, lunch, dinner, whatever it is, they have a ton of options. So head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code LUKE50 to get 50% off your first factor box and 20% off your next month of orders. I love them. It's one less thing I have to worry about. I got plenty of things to worry about, as you can see behind me. So head to factor75.com to get 50% off your first order from factor and 20% off your first month of orders from factor. We have two Yamaha 25 two strokes and one John Doe. I really want to take both of these to hang them on here and be able to control them with one tiller. Why? You shouldn't have to ask why. If you have to ask why, then maybe this is not the video for you. Number one thing <laughs> you would usually do is make sure both the engines run. I think we're going to do that later because I'm pretty confident we can get them running. Although I do know mine has some kind of spark issue. I think we need to at least start hanging engines, mostly so that we can stand back and look at it and think, Dang, this is going to be awesome. Let's see if the transom is even going to pull them too much. I like it already. Nice, nice. Oh, dude, that's so cool. It is done. <laughs> that is sick. So I think we just rock it like this with two tillers. So for steering, well, you're going to have to connect them to dead center, so that way they'll move both the same. Oh, really yours look a little rough under there. That's a little scudgy under there. Algae growing on it. Yeah. <laughs> so this is what motors look like when they get used. No, this is what they look like when they don't get used and yeah. let sit in the field. And this is what they look like when they just get sat in an air conditioned shop. Yeah. This thing, Riley waxed his motor. This is, I did not, it seemed like that. A very, very good representation of who I am versus who Riley is and why we work well together because this is Riley's motor, right? Riley got this motor and it is in perfect shape. It's probably never been ran, it's certainly never been limped home or. Uh, scad for parts and then rebuild. Riley has no hours whatsoever. Riley's been laying cardboard down everywhere he goes so he doesn't scratch it. My engine, on the other hand, is much nicer and has been stored in a field on top of a pile of crab floats so it's not sitting in the dirt. Mine has a lot more character, which makes it run a lot better. Also, probably got a million hours on it. It has definitely been scad for parts and rebuilt multiple times in its life. You're taking away a little bit of the protection, actually. That's harder than algae on it. I'm actually kind of scared for my mower to see water. If you have twins, you want them to be twins, identical twins. You don't want no fraternal twins back here. <laughs> you got the redhead stepchild and these are the golden the twins. They are always going to be fraternal oh, twins. God. That looks good on this side. Oh man, I was going to put tape, put tape around mine so it didn't get scratched up. Who cares? I do. It's a boat motor. It's a clean boat motor. Does that work? Yeah, that's perfect. There's your tape. So basically, this is not stainless, not enclosed, and I found it over there in the shop. Not four hundred dollars. John, maybe John paid four hundred bucks for it. I don't know. I guess that's what we're looking for. Some money. See this ingenuity that he has. What he does. Oh man. He finds ways to make stuff. I work. told you. All right, if you really want to, I'll let you drill a secondary bolt in my motor. <laughs> so we both have to sit back here and run the... I think that the easiest way to do the throttle. As long as there's friction in the throttles. Yeah, but if you got to slow down real quick, yeah, that's, that, yeah, <laughs> that's what I worry about. Yeah, I think it's strong. Probably as good as we're going to get. All right, so what I got going right now is that we have the outline of the motors where they're going to bolt up, but these bolts that hold the transom together are not allowing the motor to sit flat. So I'm going to put some grease on the back of all these bolts, press this board up against them, flip it over, and then drill holes where all the grease is at so that the bolt heads can stick through the board, and then the motor can bolt up flat. All right, so I made you this. That's Make it work. Oh, beautiful. Oh, I like that. Fitting to a fitting to a fitting to a fitting to a fitting. And no Teflon tape. That's perfect. Well, it's mocked up. <laughs> I like it. I did find the five rolls of Teflon tape, so I will not use it. Has my stamp of approval. Like a glove. Now I need to be able to hold this on without. Well, that's the motor's for It's going to clamp it in place. That is true. I guess you're right. We don't need two clamps. All right, transom is pretty much ready to rock. We should maybe fix the hole. I mean, ideally, this boat goes so fast that there's no chance there's even any un water underneath Dude. the hole to begin with. But <laughs> I guess with our track record of things not running, but you got to slow down to get it to the dock. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. you need to drive right up 
<laughs> I got a wad here for you to stick on that. Oh, yeah. I can see daylight. Who needs a welder? I wish I didn't look underneath the boat. Yeah, don't look underneath the boat. It's nothing but patches. Shout out to the guy that brings all the Loctite stuff to the crab stand. Appreciate it. But you know, this is all this way. amount of horsepower for this boat. Illegal amount of horsepower? There's no... Is there such a thing? Actually, there is. I know. <laughs> But there's no uh, there's no plate that says we can't. I probably That's fell off of the old transom. Fifteen. Four. Uh, you replace a transom. You make sure you write in the marker that barely writes. Mm. Why would they put an illegal amount of horsepower to a boat? That's it's a safety thing. Like I said, why would you do that? <laughs> All right, we got our setup. We definitely need that. We won't start without it. But we got our linkage. Riley did not want me to drill another hole through his nice engine, so I came up with this system with band clamps to keep the piece from torquing, so whatever. We got some adjustable linkage with lockers here. Same setup on the other side. And look at that. I mean, that's pretty slick. Now we just gotta get them running. No, I get, we definitely should have done that first, but like Riley said, if we would have spent all our time getting them running and they didn't run, we would have never got to this point here. So now we're too far in and now we need to get them running. We got custom fuel system here to each motor, one fuel tank. Are you almost out of gas? Uh, we don't have a terrible amount of gas. Uh, oh, no, we got, there. there's like two or three gallons in there. I mix it 50 to one, so I wanna lean around a little bit. I bet the clean motor won't run. Yama bombs are supposed to look like that. Look, this is you. This is the guy that she tells you not to worry about. Riley is making <laughs> a big mistake right now, and a lot of you guys, if you watch my channel, you know he's putting gas in it before you even try to get it started. It's a sure way to make sure nothing's gonna start. You need gas to get her going. We need to be trying to get this thing started on a McDonald's cup, pouring in the carburetor half full of sweet tea. Motor oil is two-stroke oil, which I've done and it works. Two, the blue two-stroke oil is a myth. To, you put 30 weight in the oil. Hmm. There was no such thing as two-stroke oil when I was a kid. You remember the invention never, of the combustion? I, <laughs> I was gonna say, I think it might have been around, just never heard of it. John was around for the invention of the internal combustion engine. I know they did. <laughs> yeah, go again. Oh, 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 oh. Look at that, how dry rot of that fuel line is literally split in half, bro. Look at that. Oh, man. Look at the fuel line on Riley's motor. See, this is what happens when it sits around in pristine condition. That's why you always store your motors in the woods, top of a pile of crab pot floats so they don't sit lay up right on the ground. You gotta be careful with all these fuel oh lines. Oh my now. god. Good this one's not bad, it's a different yeah, that material. One's, that one's it has fixing some, the crack though. It has some flexibility left. All right, we'll find you a piece of fuel line off of something else. We'll just drop it off of this motor, dude. This That's one's right here. Oh no, now my... Now mine's ah, leaking. Yours is leaking now. See, but I ex everybody expected mine to leak. We could just bypass the filter. I like where your head's at. This extension cord is very helpful. <laughs> Dang, boy. Wow. All right, one started. Yep. about the other one? I know this one doesn't start without starting fluid. You don't know the magic of letting something sit outside for five or six years. Usually it solves all those problems. They're typically way better. Holy crap! They're both even pumping water. So sketchy. Uh, yeah, no. Dude, check it out. twin screw maneuvers here. Alright. I, I thought one was supposed to rotate one way and the other the other one. That's full tilt in reverse. This is the slowest this boat's ever gone. Oh. Mine shut itself off. I know it doesn't look like I'm doing anything, but this is actually one of the most important jobs right now. Because if I were to get up out of the bow, they would definitely get wet. She's a little stern heavy. That's how you know people are getting some stuff done. Uh-huh, yeah. Riley's runs on both cylinders. Big whoop, dude. My cowling's on. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Not for long. The best part about having two identical motors is you can always rob parts off of one to make the other one run. There's a really good chance that it could just be a bug. Spark tester? <laughs> Who is this guy, dude? Spark tester. Screwdriver, maybe? A Phillips head? It's easier when you're working by yourself, guys. 
It's right. a pencil, man. There's a pencil. It's got graphite in there. <laughs> what? The pencil. You can use graphite in a pencil. Really? Mm hmm. That's what I say. So, yesterday, kind of the thing that held us up with the dual boat engine thing, the CDI box on my 25 horsepower is bad, which I kind of knew, and I had ordered another part, but it's not the right part. A couple wires off. We can't make it work. They're very hard to find online. I made some calls. There's this place that we're just going to check out right here that I've always wanted to check out. Uh, I think it's called American Outboards, but look, they got all kinds of awesome stuff. This place looks like my freaking dream, dude. They got boats and campers, all kinds of awesome stuff, dude. I have people dude, all the time cool. that like call me like, hey, you know, I got this old Evan Rude or a Montgomery Ward or something crazy, and who do you know they work on? I'm like, nobody's gonna touch it, dude. You gotta learn how to fix that thing yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a limit to what you guys will work on? Priceless. Not really. Send them our way. Yeah, that's good to know. We'll work Priceless. On just about everything. Yeah. Sears and Robo. Man, these old ones, they look more like appliances, refrigerators, than oh, they yeah. did freaking outboards. <laughs> Is it like as you go further back, do they get older and older, or are they just kind of wherever they fit? Kind of wherever they fit for now. We're starting yeah. to kind of downsize a little bit on some of it, but yeah, those are the old Fisher Price uh, Bearcats. Fisher Price. Yeah. You see that, Riley? The oh, top of the truck. The Fisher Price. He says the first four stroke outboard. That's wild. Yeah, quite the collection of them, too. Yeah. I said they had their problems, but. You know, it was first step in the four stroke direction. I think they range 55 to 70, I think. Which was big power yeah, back, back then. then. Oh, Bearcat, yeah. I'm not familiar with Bearcat. Bear a pile of Chryslers, that's what I like oh, yeah. to hear. How many can you fit on the back of a John boat? <laughs> yeah. That's the one you need for that boat out there. Yeah. You just wish you had enough time to get them all running. I'm telling you. In the wintertime, that's a lot of what we do is we just kind of pick a couple of them and restore them. You'd start a YouTube channel, bro. Right? People would love that. Oh, People yeah. Totally watch that. Absolutely. Really I would. would. You really should. <laughs> I would. So we got a new CDI box. Looks taking too long. Burning daylight. And he got a paddle out there. Oh look, there he is. What? It's already replaced. I made really? a guest. I made a guest appearance while you were. Oh nice. Over there on the phone. I was in my office having a meeting with the boss. You know, I'm thoroughly impressed that you haven't left this toolkit open in the rain yet. It's not full I know. Of I know. <laughs> I've, been, I've honestly also been impressed with myself that I haven't done that. I like your other socket set that's waterlogged. Well, yeah, but that's my outdoor one. That's my one that I'm supposed to leave outside in the water. Also, I can't believe we literally died and went to heaven today, and now we're back at the marina. It's crazy. We're in heaven right now. All right, go for it. You need to touch the plug to something, I dummy. did. I'm testing one at a time. Oh. All right, go. Oh, man, we got definitely got on both of them. Did we got a spark of both? Get your hand off that. I don't trust you. <laughs> Consider it a hurt on both hands. Yes, we have a spark on both. Luke makes fun of me because my spark tester, his spark tester, is just seeing how bad it hurts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Only hurts a little, weak spark. Hurts a lot, good spark. Don't hurt at all, no, no spark. spark. <laughs> <laughs> Vicious with the cover on. I know. Yeah, I have confidence too. I can't believe that CDI box actually fixed this problem. Cooking. Cooking with Crisco. That's wide open. Whoa. It's a little squirrely. Oh, 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 that was awesome. Yeah, we hit a wave and we were like, we were and we were out there. You think they need to get trimmed down a little bit? You think we get no spray though? Oh my God, that got squirrely. And then I throttled down on one and I was like, oh my God, that made it way worse. <laughs> no. Oh, mine shut off. You're running now. Kill switches, very important in this boat. Always wear your kill Hell switch. Hell yeah. Y'all doing some sketchy shit. Holy crap. be a lot faster i'm not gonna lie i did too it still smokes less than nick's <laughs> nick's four stroke <laughs> smells like it's got freaking four thousand hours on it <laughs> that's why we have two. Oh my god <laughs> oh my god oh. look at the water in the bottom of that butt All right, 
Do y'all see water. that water? My motor is, I suspect, running a little hot. I think that that's the problem. So I got it trimmed up a little bit. We'll see what she does with the duels with a broken one. There's a geyser. I don't know if you can see this, but uh, we have gained a little bit of water in the boat. Yeah. Get the plug out. Slide into the ramp and run out of gas. <laughs> right there. <laughs> this is close. Oh, I'm glad I forgot. I remember. All right. All right. I know that move. When you've got so much water in the bottom of the boat and you get it up on plane, you pull the plug and all the water that you have picked up will run out the plug. Uh, and then you put the plug back in, twist it down and get it launched on the trailer. <laughs> I, um, yeah, I'm a redneck. I've, I've done that a time or two. I think that there's like more tweaks we can do to make this thing even faster. That feels, that bolt feels so tight. Like it, it wants to snap. Oh, and that feel like it's about to go. All right, well, they're in there doing some technical crap. <laughs> I'm going to show you how to make a hose clamp if you don't have one. Get a piece of uh, MIG wire off your MIG machine, twist it like that, stick it over top of your hose, stick your hose on, and then grab a set of pliers and twist, and twist that wire. All right, well, you guys were in there playing around. I got the real technical heavy lifting done. You got an O-ring on there? Uh, yeah. And I hooked up the fuel filter again. Nice. Although there's a bit of a nick in that line, fuel line. We'll see if it sprays fuel, then I guess we'll fix it. up the fuel? I yeah. Just the right now. Yeah. Give her a couple pumps. That's all I got in me. I know. I see fuel in there. Oh, there you go. But it's not all the way full. Okay, there we go. We're getting somewhere now. Will it spray? You got pressure. Looks good. That's factory Yamaha standard right there. That's how exactly how it tells you to fix that problem in the handbook in Spanish. I've seen way more videos of people in Central and South America fixing these with things like that. In the English handbook, it just tells you to go online and order the part. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that's full of ants. This guy was full of ants too. Coming out of that hose right there. Right there. I was wondering because there was a bunch of ants in the there's a boat like, too. I was like, where did these ants yeah, come from? Like, Ants were what was bogging your motor down. All right, see if the ants come out. No, I haven't seen no ants. I think it's all good now. These guys. It was kind of funny. There was ants in the boat. And I was like, where did all these ants come from? And then the reason the motor was getting hot was because there was ants in the engine. That'll do it. <laughs> you just it. had to blow them out with the air compressor. Not yeah. enough. Yeah, too tight. much. Can, there's seals there you can blow out. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. That's for later. We'll just store some grease up in there. Next time we need to do an impeller, we'll already have some in the inside of the housing. Yeah, hand me that and I'll put them in like one turn so it'll hang down. Yeah, exactly. I know, dude, I'm a tech. Certified. Yeah, certified. 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 How do you know what adjustment it is? You don't. That's why it's kind of annoying. You, you get it the best you can and then you mess with it a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so I should tighten this up? Yeah. You do it like a tire? Uh, kind of. You don't really have to. How tight? Until you feel it strip out the back off quarter turn. <laughs> uh, should we get a grease gun and grease fittings just because we can? Uh, actually, yeah, because yours probably could use some grease. The stiff steering actually helps us. Then don't grease it. Yeah, I think I'm not going to. I like this part. It's the only rusty part on the motor, but somehow it's completely almost rusted all the way through. Other than that, everything else is fine. Mine looks like that. Riley's looks like that. 
but I think when Riley goes away for the uh, this weekend, mine might look like his. His might look like mine. I think my motor home with me is stay in my bed. Just so I know you'll still know parts. <laughs> we got both motors tuned up really nice. A new impeller in this one, even though it was mostly just ants. And every tool we could possibly need to fix them both. A hammer. <laughs> need a bigger hammer. That might be a leak. Could explain the water. Look at this kid. He is certifiable. We knocked a rivet out, so where's Lindsay when you need her? But uh, Lindsay, I think if you just put your foot over it, we'll there you go, non-issue, right? How am I gonna drive and do this? <laughs> Every time you hit a wave, it's spraying your I'm shook. I gotta put my foot over it. He's moved the fuel tank forward. Um, so update on the leak. It's not getting any better, and there's a, a good amount of water in the boat as well, so maybe time to head back. There's your sign, as Jeff Foxworthy would say. I highly recommend Bill Ingvall. This is awesome. Bill Ingvall. Considering say this here. a win, this was pretty sweet. The boat is currently sinking. Oh, it sprays. I seen it hit the bottom of my neck. Through that hole? Oh. Yeah, that was a geyser to my face doesn't leak a drop like subscribe whatever if you want if not here's what it is you already watched the video uh luke mcfadden uh he is a maryland crabber and i strongly suggest if you are not looking at some of his stuff and you are one of my subscribers uh go over there and check out his stuff he's got very interesting crabbing videos from the commercial crabbing standpoint not only does he go catch those crabs, he figured out that, you know, I don't want to catch these crabs and bring them to a wholesaler. He went direct to restaurants, and then what he wasn't selling to restaurants, he bought a piece of property and put up a crab stand. So he was selling his crabs. You can't get much more fresh than that. Because he took the middleman out. He's making good money. Please go check Luke out. And uh, we will see you next week on the next drop. So y'all take care. Have a great evening. Aye! Time to rock on.